As the unified consciousness began to vibrate, creation started, and parts took on different forms. Some became angels, some became bright souls, and some even became galaxies that humans recognize today. However, despite their differences, they were all one, parts of a single, unified, bright consciousness. In reviewing theories based on Casey's readings, we come across a discussion that closely resembles ancient Persian mystical beliefs, revealing traces of ancient wisdom we've previously discussed. This belief holds that throughout history, certain individuals acted as guardians of this wisdom, passing it down through generations without allowing any opportunity for distortion or alteration. In this belief, many well-known Persian mystics and sages were members of this mysterious and hidden group, and some even included parts of its teachings in their writings. Links to videos about this ancient Persian wisdom can be found in the description of this YouTube video. If you've watched those videos, some of the discussions in this book, based on Casey's readings about Atlantis, may sound familiar to you. For example, Casey explained that the human soul is part of a greater spiritual whole that has forgotten its origin due to a fundamental forgetfulness. However, whenever a soul desires and is ready, it can reconnect with this unified consciousness. Casey's psychic readings were also carried out through his connection to this universal whole, and for that reason, he didn't view his work as anything extraordinary. He believed that anyone could perform psychic readings by connecting to this unified source. He likened the relationship between the soul and the unified consciousness to a choir, where each member has a unique voice, but can create exceptional harmony when working together. However, through the course of the material world's evolution and human presence, some members of this choir fell out of sync with the unified consciousness. We previously discussed a group of souls residing in the spiritual realm who intervene to help souls trapped in the material world within human bodies. These souls intentionally entered physical bodies to guide humanity toward liberation from the material world. The leader of this group is named Amelius, who reincarnates at various points in human history as a guide, trying to reconnect human souls to their true essence. Jesus is also introduced as one of these guides, with the added note that before his role as a saviour, he had reincarnated 30 times to gain the knowledge he possessed. It's further explained that the presence of souls connected to the unified consciousness in the physical world was initially unproblematic. They could return to the spiritual realm after each earthly life. The trouble began when these souls sought to create independently of the unified consciousness and use their creative power destructively. Humans still possess this creative power, manifesting as mental and intellectual energy, meaning that one's thoughts hold far more significance than spoken words. It is our thoughts and mental focus that shape our destiny. Whatever resides in your mind will become reality, and if you have a true goal in mind and sincerely think about it, it will materialise. This creative power also operates on a larger scale, and as people's collective thoughts become more positive, a better world than the one we know will emerge. In response to the argument that it's impossible to always avoid negative thoughts, Casey explains that for every negative thought, a positive mindset can be adopted. Just as for every problem, there's a solution. Instead of focusing on the problem at hand or the one that may arise, it's better to think about solutions and the best ways to resolve the issue. Humans are not responsible for finding these solutions themselves. All the answers lie in the unified consciousness, which, in ancient Persian beliefs, is the same as the spiritual realm. Thus, humans are not the source of ideas and solutions, but are receivers of waves from the spiritual realm to solve their problems. Their only role is to choose between the different ideas and solutions available to them. With every choice they make, they shape the reality of their world, what we refer to as intuition or insight is similar. 
Individuals receive messages from the parallel world, signaling an impending event and guiding them to act. Casey holds a similar view on dreams, believing that dreams are a tool for receiving divine inspiration, and each dream shows us one of the paths ahead. If you've watched our previous videos, you're familiar with Casey's views on astrology. He believes every human soul travels through the galaxies before reaching Earth, and some souls even resided on other planets before reincarnating here, gaining special abilities along the way. For example, in one of his readings, Casey talks about a soul that took 10,000 years to finally reach Earth, acquiring powers and abilities along its journey that would benefit it on this planet. By examining his various readings, we see that Jupiter is linked to one's activities and relationships with large groups. A person influenced by this planet may excel in international relations or in leading and influencing large crowds. Mercury grants souls reasoning ability and those influenced by it perform well in tasks requiring focus, planning and multitasking. Uranus relates to extremes and often people influenced by this planet are perceived as cold or detached in their relationships. However, they are typically inclined toward mystical and hidden sciences. Venus endows souls with an appreciation for beauty and those under its influence often pursue careers in art or fields associated with elegance and refinement. Mars incites anxiety and anger and those affected by it must work harder to control their behavior. In one of Casey's psychic readings, he notes that while anger cannot be entirely avoided, a person's worth is measured by their ability to control it. In other words, the easier it is for someone to control their anger, the more valuable they are. Neptune is connected to intuition, hope and dreams. But most importantly, Casey emphasizes the power of water associated with this planet. Individuals influenced by Neptune have a special life-giving energy and, for example, whatever they plant on Earth is certain to grow and thrive. In one of his readings, water is described as a mysterious, transparent, odourless liquid that doesn't belong to Earth but is the foundation of life on this planet. Neptune, associated with the water element, is linked to mystical forces. Most important of all is Saturn, a planet we've previously discussed in ancient beliefs and will revisit. According to Casey's readings, souls gain significant opportunities on Saturn, and once they enter its realm, they have the potential to unite with a unified consciousness. Thus, Casey views the solar system as an educational center, with each planet functioning as a faculty that aids in the soul's development. If you've been following the ancient Persian beliefs with us, you've likely noticed similarities between this part of Casey's readings and the beliefs of Mithraic followers. They too believed in the journey of the soul through realms beyond Earth, and their teachings aim to prepare each individual for the different stages of this journey and the ultimate exit from the material world. It's possible to consider the ancient Persian beliefs as part of the teachings attributed to the children of the Law of One in Casey's readings those who mastered the forces governing the universe and whose teachings focused on the nature of the human soul and the ways it could reconnect with the unified consciousness. In these teachings, humans consist of spiritual souls trapped in physical bodies, meaning they belong neither to this material world nor to the spiritual one. This dual existence often leads to a perpetual state of bewilderment. Moreover, the feeling of lacking a companion makes things more difficult. This companion is often referred to as a soulmate, meaning a kindred soul. The explanation is that the first human forms on Earth contained both male and female aspects, but for certain reasons, they were separated into two individuals while still sharing a common soul. Since birth, every person's soul seeks to find its other half, which resides in another human body, in Greek mythology, one of the most famous stories tells of a time when humans existed in three forms, female, male, and a combination of both. This third form, 
humans with both male and female aspects, had twice the capacity and power, and there was a fear that they might ascend Mount Olympus, the home of the gods, and attain godhood. So, Zeus split these humans with dual aspects in two, preventing them from becoming a threat. According to this belief, people who feel as though they are a man trapped in a woman's body, or vice versa, or those who identify as both male and female, might be remnants of this ancient lineage. Similarly, intersex individuals who identify as both male and female could also be connected to this lineage. A side discussion, which we may revisit later, concerns the different ways human civilizations have treated individuals with this perspective. For example, Native Americans regarded intersex individuals as possessing supernatural powers, and from childhood, they were taught esoteric sciences. Many ancient civilizations held a similar view, seeing intersex individuals as people connected to the gods and deserving of respect. However, as time has progressed, this respect has diminished. In Casey's view, one's close acquaintances play a role in their spiritual journey, helping them recognize their shortcomings and become more complete. In each reincarnation, a person interacts with the same souls, although their roles may differ. For instance, someone who was a parent in one life may be a child or close friend in the next. Nevertheless, all souls are part of the unified consciousness, and anyone can connect to this creative mind at any moment. The general takeaway is that any time you feel inexplicably happy and content, it's the moment you've connected with the infinite mind that is your origin and source, the creative force within every human being, available to anyone who can fully access their memory. The only barrier to this process is the soul's forgetfulness over millions of years of existence in the material world. It has gradually forgotten its true identity, and for thousands of years, a secret group, through its covert and confidential activities, has been trying to eliminate this forgetfulness. It's highly likely that they were also present in ancient Persia, and our goal has been to learn more about them together. <laughs>